All right, so the first goal is gonna be to get to this alternator and get it off so we can make sure that that's not seized up. So first step is gonna be pulling this fan shroud and then closing. It looks like to do that, we'll have to pull this module, just a couple of torques here on the front side. And then we've got a Torx there. And then we've got a couple fasteners on these corners. There might be one hiding behind the uh, air filter cover. Pulling that cover, that shroud, excuse me, wasn't too bad. There was four 10 mils, a T30 Torx, and a 13 mil ground screw holding on the shroud itself. The way that they built this thing is they build it and then they put it in this bucket and then they screw it in. So you do have to remove the six engine mount support bolts from the underside. I was able to kind of lift it up, pull that shroud out. A good piece of advice that was given to me early on when I was learning to take things apart is we'll pull off the bolts that you see that you know are holding it together and then kind of just shake it, see where there's still tension. There was one hidden behind the air filter cover, and then there was one tucked in down here. It was a little hard to see. But for now, we've got it out the way. So the next steps that I'm gonna do, pull this starter, get the alternator unplugged. We are gonna have to pull the carb and this starter panel, pretty much get all this out of here, kind of clean it up. And I think with that, we can take this out and then it looks like down here we'll get we'll, we'll want to take off too is it looks like this is a type of crank sensor and you can see there's markings on the fan that starter engages and this is turning over maybe our starter so we've got something going on with this starter that seems interesting and a typical automotive starter you know when the solenoid engages this gear gets flung out and goes until you disengage the solenoid in the starter and then it retracts. This is a little bit different. I'm wondering if this retracts automatically when this starts going, but like mechanically, it's not like electronically controlled. Because we're in the off position, you know, I would imagine that it'd be retracted. I don't know, a little bit different design, kind of cool. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and kind of strip this down, clean this up. Oh yeah, I gotta pull this fan, so I gotta pull that bolt. And then we'll see what's behind there and see how we can disengage it from our engine. So it's a new day here at the shop. Gotten a little bit of a frustrating situation, which you guys will run into as well. With this fan, this fan has a couple purposes. It acts as a balancer, it kind of acts like your uh, harmonic balancer. These markings here, these are to activate that sensor that's down here. And this sensor is directly tight. It's a sensor and your coil that drives your spark plug down here. So if you're switching out your spark plug cable, you're gonna have to get this whole thing. I mean, it unplugs here, but you'll have to get the coil because the plug is like directly attached to it. But this controls your spark timing. It's a balancer and your fan, and it's taper fitted onto the alternator output shaft. Now these generators, they're not supposed to be taken apart by anyone except for the dealer, is my understanding. That's why they're so hard to get information on and probably why you don't see a lot of YouTube videos on them because we don't have any specifications. Like when I have to put this all back together, you know, I'm just going to have to figure it out. But there's a special puller, I believe, that's what these three holes are for, or it's either meant to only be installed once and that's it. So I drilled mine out. I ended up using just some drill bits and a step bit. At first I tried this guy, but it just was too deep for that cutting disc and there was too much friction. So I kind of drilled all around and then used the step bit to kind of widen it. There are a little, I did get a couple battle scars on here that I'll have to kind of file down, but you know, this is nothing too critical. It's not like the inside of an engine or anything. So I'll just file this down a little bit. And as you can see, I got the starter pulled, carburetor's been pulled. I got that sensor pulled. That sensor is zip tied under here a bunch of times. So you have to cut all those. And I got our starting module pulled. So next step will be to go through and undo some of this wiring. I gotta figure out how to disconnect this. It looks like there might be a way. I'm not sure yet, I'll update you after I get in there. But the next step, yeah, is gonna be taking off this plate and then I should hopefully by then have access through here to these 
back bolts that attach it to our engine. And then we can make the definite call whether the alternator is seized up or the engine. For the alternator to seize up, it would really just be these bearings. If these bearings failed or got super tweaked, that would cause it to seize up. But outside of that, I don't see of any other way. That's where we're at so far. Maybe if anybody finds a better way to take this off or make something, let me know. Okay, so where are we at? Well, we got the stator out of the alternator. So what I've done so far since the last video is there was these uh, T20 Torx holding on those brushes and, and then it was just these two bolts in here holding in the stator. And by brushes, I mean these little guys are your brushes. You have springs on them for as they wear and they track here. The issue that we're into now is so we have our rotor that's attached to our crank. We know it's not the alternator because this bearing is free and there's no other, there's no bearing on the backside. So the only thing is if this bearing seized up, you have to get a lot of moisture in there and all of that. And starters are actually really strong. I've come in cases where engines are like semi seized, but the starter is still strong enough to turn over the engine. So starters are, are pretty powerful little motors. So the problem that we're at now is how do we get the rotor off the crank itself? I found this little pin and I believe that's what's holding it in there. If you guys can see that. Yeah, that little pin right there. I think I'm gonna drill that out. We made the case that we know it needs an engine for sure. What I'd like to do for the next section is take off the exhaust, put this engine up on the workbench, and pull this timing cover and see what happened. I did not find any type of oil level sensor. So there's no way for that computer to shut it down because it doesn't have that information. Um, so I think the owner was misinformed on this generator's ability to do that. It is a pretty smart generator. It is well built, but it doesn't have that function. All right, folks, so before I go and drill out that pin that holds that rotor to the crank, there's actually two of them. There's that one and there was one 90 degrees offset to it. So I needed to get it on the bench so I could move it around and stuff anyways. Curiosity has really gotten the best of me. I haven't pulled this cover yet. I got not a clue what's gonna be in there. Do you guys like watching the nuts and bolts stuff? I think it's kind of boring. That's why I don't really show it. I'm usually kind of fumbling around. But if you guys like it, let me know and I'll leave it in. Okay, popping this cover is probably gonna be kind of a pain in the butt. I can't remember how I did it the last time I pulled one of these covers off. I think I went from the bottom. Oh, let's try the old flathead. I mean, we know this motor's totally screwed anyway, so if I jack up the cover, I'm not too worried about it because we know it's totaled. Let me find a tool. All right, I think I found something that'll work. Now there's gonna be a centrifugal switch right here. This and that counterbalance, I, I believe we're gonna pop out with this if, if I remember correctly. Scared the crap out of me the first time I pulled one of these covers. I was like, I don't know where this goes. But it's pretty easy to put them back. That's one of the reasons why the cover is so hard to pull on this thing. Now we can use the pop the screwdriver. It's 
get one more flathead going. Man, the anticipation, the anticipation is just irking at me. Yeah, you wanna kinda evenly get that cover off. She's about ready to pop here. Okay, so we're off the dowels. Boom, we're in. Let's take a look. Here's that uh, centrifugal switch I was talking about. I see very little oil. This should just slide out. Well, I guess not in the position that it's in. I'm not seeing any teeth missing. And what's going on here? So right there is our oil pump. It's just a stick that goes down the oil pan. It seems like it's bound up against this counterbalance. Let me see if I can get this stick off and see if I can get this out and see if we can get this thing unjammed. Couple observations. This is the bottom of our skirt on our piston head. And look at how it's butted right up against our crank counter. I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see this. I'll try my best. Ah, see that? Something, the bearing failed. And that's what we're all bound up on. Spun a bearing. All right, folks, it took a little finagling, but I was able to get the cam and the other counterbalance out. This is our bearing surface. Just smoked. This is our oil pump, and I'll zoom you guys back in here. You can see that this crank got smoked too. But everything else looks fine. You know, like I was saying, the teeth look fine and all of that. This bearing doesn't seem to be compromised. So it needs a rod and a crank for sure. This is where the research starts. Can I source a new engine? If I can source a new engine, okay, cool, that's one option. Or can I source the parts and information of the engine? Um, I've got an engine serial number up here and some other markings. But yeah, this is where the work, the physical work stops and now the computer work starts and diving down into the internets and seeing what I can come up with. I don't know if anybody else, I'm sure other people have been down this journey. You know, I can't be the only one. But I don't know the answer, so we'll find out. Yeah, man, that's a bummer. Smoke this. With only a thousand hours on this generator, that's what low oil will do to a motor. Well, kill it. Well, pretty cool. Here's our little, these parts are adorable. Here's our little cam shaft. Here's our little counterbalance, secondary counterbalance. That's what I'm calling it at least. Yeah, there you go. All right, folks, well, there you have it. We spun a bearing. I did spend a few hours doing research online, trying to source parts any kind of service information for going this deep and I couldn't find anything which was a real bummer. I guess the owner was able to source a parts generator whatever that means. So this series will be on hold for a little bit while that get all gets sorted out and then when I figure out what we're working with and if we can put this thing back together I'll take you along for that ride too. Um, the scariest part is going to be drilling out those pins for that rotor and crankshaft connection. I, in my experience drilling out metal, it being that tight and that small, it's going to be really hard and take a lot of patience. But I don't know. We'll see how it goes. So anyways, hope you had a fun adventure in the garage. Please comment, like, share, follow, hit the bell, do your thing. Appreciate all the support. And I'll bring you on the next project, which is I'm putting a winch in the garage. So that should be fun and have a good one.